And also I have the calculator there. So that way, um, if you have the TI-83 or 84, you do kind of want to follow along what I do on the calculator, which will be over here. So. So right now we're going to get into is something called the complement rule. So the complement rule kind of coincide with disjoint and mutually exclusive. Because for anything to be a complement, there essentially has to be disjoint because either going to be one event going to occur or a second event going to occur, but it's impossible for both events to occur at the same time. I have a question. What page are we on? Um, page 16. Okay. Um, I'm not sure. Did you um? Did you go over page fifteen already? Um, yeah, we we went over page fifteen. That was the last thing that we went over. Like, cause okay. So for page 15, we just essentially find the complement. So we're saying the event is passing the class. So the complement of that will be not passing. And then we went over, it will rain in Los Angeles today. And the complement of that was it is not. Oops going to rain in Los Angeles. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so we did go over that. That was like the last day we actually went over. So whenever we find the complement, pretty much, or the probability of the complement, we're going to be using these two formula. So we're either going to be using this formula over here, or you can use this formula over here. It depends on which notation you like the better. The first one is everything written out. Okay, if you look at it, it's probably A does not occur. is equal to 1 minus essentially the complement, which is probably of A does occur. Or if you're okay with the symbol, we're gonna use probably a to the c power is equal to one minus the probability of a, which is the probability it does occur. Yeah. Any questions so far on those two formulas? Super. All right, so let's do the first problem. So we're gonna say, let event a represent the event the candidate win a election. Suppose the probability of A is equal to 0.70. So that's the probability that they will win the election. So part A said then the complement event of A will be what? So what will be the complement of event A? And if you want, you can just put this in the chat. There will be the candidate doesn't win the election. Cool, perfect. So it'll be They'll be the candidate that does not win the election. And that's it. And if you look at pro, well, if you look at part B, part B is slightly different because in part B, they want the probability of that event occurring. So we're going to say probability of the complement of A is equal to 1 minus the 0.70, which now will give me 0.30. All right, and that's it for that first problem. Any question for that first problem? All right, sweet. They've gone to the second problem. 
So for this process, there are six blue balls, seven red balls, and three white balls in a bucket. If you choose a ball at random, what's the probability that it will not be white? So the first thing you want to kind of look at is you see how many total um, balls are in the bucket. So you have six plus you have seven red balls plus you have three white balls. So if you do six plus seven plus three, that's going to give you 16 total balls. So if you look at the problem, they want to find the probability is not white. So we want to find the probability is not Y. So we're just going to find the complement. So we're going to say 1 minus the probability it is Y. So we know we have three total Y balls out of 16, which will give us 13 out of 16. Everybody good so far? Have we got 13 out of 16? All right, so let me do that in the calculator. So if you do 13 divided by 16, you get 0.8125. So we'll say, and that'll be it for that second problem in regard to the complement. Any question in regard to how we did that one? Cool. All right. So let's do this next one. So for this one says, according to the American Veterinarian Medical Association, 31.6% of American households own a dog. What's the probability that a randomly selected household does not own a dog? So they tell us the probability somebody own a dog is equal to 0.316. But we want to find the probability that they don't own a dog. So if we want to find the probability they don't own a dog. We just want to take the complement of that. So we'll do 1 minus 0.316, which if we do 1 minus 0.316, you get 0.684. All right. And that's it for that one. Any question for the second or second problem? Hey. Cool. All right. So what I want you to do, I want you to try these next that's two so problems. So try <laughs> doing these two problems. If you have any questions, just put a question on the chat. But try working those two problems out right now. So. I'll give you a minute to work on these problems.
All right, so let's try working on these out. So if you look at the first one, it said let A represent the event a storm yeah. hit Los Angeles. If the probability of storm hit Los Angeles 5.5%, what is the probability a storm does not hit Los Angeles? So we're going to say, well, they already told us pretty much A represent, well, should be over here, represent a storm hit Los Angeles. So what we want to do, we want to find the complement of A. So we'll put a C. So to find the complement of A, and if you kind of look at it, the two events are disjoint event because either a storm is going to hit um, Los Angeles or a storm is not going to hit Los Angeles. So there's pretty much no in between. So for this one, we'll say 1 minus 0 0.055, which should give us 0.945. And that's your final answer for that first one. Any question for that first one? Sweet. All right, so let's go on to the second one. So if you look at the second one, it says about 20% of movies coming out of Hollywood are comedy. Warner Brothers have been a lead studio for about 9% of recent movies. And about 2% of recent movies are comedy from Warner Brothers. Let C denote the event a movie is comedy and W denote the event a movie is produced by Warner Brothers. So for the first one, it says what is the probability that a movie coming out of Hollywood is not a comedy? So we want to find the probability it's not a comedy. So first thing you want to look for is how many of these movies are comedy. So they told us right here 20%. So we're going to say 1 minus 0.20, which is equal to 0.80. And that'll be it for that first part. Any question for that first part? All right, so the second one says, what are the probability that a movie coming out of Hollywood is not produced by Warner Brothers? So they tell us 9% of movies are produced by Warner Brothers. So it's a probability a movie is not produced by Warner Brothers is equal to 1 minus 0 0.09, which is equal to 0.91. And that's it for that second one. Any question for that second part? All right, so let's move on down. All right, so for the next part, so the data to the bottom represents the 393,186 travel time to work for resident of Culver City. So this is telling us how long or how many people commute a certain amount. So we have certain people who commute less than five minutes, five to nine minutes, all the way to 90 or more minutes. So what we want to do, we're going to use that information in order to find the probability that we want. So for part A, it says, what is the probability a randomly selected resident has a travel time of 90 or more minutes? So since we want it to be 90 or more minutes, that means we're going to be using this number over here. Because that's how many people commute 90 or more minutes. So we'll say probability they commute 90 plus is equal to 4,895. So that's how many people commute that long, but we want to find the probability. So we have to find out of how many total people. So if you look right here, they told us that's how many total people they have. So you want to divide it by 393,186. So we'll say turn on 4,895 divided by 393, 1 
86. And you roughly get 0 0.012. And that's it for A. Any question in regard to A? All right, let's do B. So for B, say, compute the probability that a randomly selected resident of Culver City will have a commute time less than 90 minutes. So less than 90 minutes, that means all of this. So the thing is, if we wanted to get that, what we could do, we could just add up all of these frequency, and then you divide it by the total amount of frequency or the total amount of people that commute. But the easier way to do this is to use the complement rule. Because I know if you add up all of this, it should add up to three, 393,186, or it should add up to 100%. So we're going to use that fast. So we're going to say probability commute is anywhere from zero to 89 minutes is equal to one minus the probability of 0 0.012 and you get 0.988. And that's it for B. So that's why you kind of want to be able to know how to use the complement rule. So that way you don't kind of, well, you don't have to add up all the probability, you just add up the one probability you're not looking for, and then you do the complement of that. But any question in regards to this last problem? All right, let's scroll on down. All right, so up next we're gonna go over 5.3, which is the independent rule and the multiplication rule. So for this one, you do wanna be careful that you don't confuse the independent rule with the, uh, with the mutually exclusive rule. Because independent just mean that one event doesn't influence the other event to occur. When you're talking about mutually exclusive, mutually exclusive just means if one event happens, the other one cannot occur. So when we're doing independent event, it just means one event doesn't influence the probability of the second event. If it does influence the probability of the second event, that means they're dependent events. So that's the difference between an independent event and a dependent event. Independent just means one event doesn't influence the probability of the second event. Dependent event mean one event influence the probability of the second event. Any question in regard to the formula so far? Or not the formula, the, the definition? All right, cool. So let's do some example. So the first example is uh, um, John wrote a six on a number cube and then flip a coin on uh, flip a coin that come up head. So right here's the first event. We'll say event A is row A Q. Event B is flip a coin. So what we want to do, we want to find out if the event of you rolling a cue affect the probability of you flipping a coin. So for that one, do you think one event should influence the other event? So in the chat, you can either put no or yes. Cool. All right, so you can say no. So since you say no, this will mean that they're independent. So that's that first example. So let's do the second example. So the second example says your teacher choose one student to lead a group and then choose another student to lead another group. So for this one, just remember, independent event just means that the probability of one event influence the probability of the second event occurring. 
So say if we have 30 students, So if you have 30 students, so the probably for the first person or the first group, so when I'm choosing the leader for the first group will be one out of 30. So there's 30 students and there's only one person that gonna lead the first group. So when we have the second group or when we're choosing the leader for the second group, It will still be one because we're only selecting one, but out of this case, since we already chose one person to be the leader in the first group, that means we only have 29 people left or 29 students left. So for this one, did the event of one event influence the probability of the second event? So on the chat, you put either yes or no. Cool. So since the answer is yes, you put dependent and that's it All right. any question in regard to the second example all right so let's do this next example so it says the battery in your cell phone is dead and the battery in your calculator are dead so for this one if you have two different well if you have a cell phone and a calculator and we're assuming the calculator is not on your phone. So for this one, we should say they're independent. Because if the your cell phone is dead, that doesn't automatically mean your calculator is gonna be dead because they run on independent, well, on independent battery. So it doesn't mean that your calculator will also be dead. So this case scenario will be an independent event. So the last one is your favorite color is blue and your friend's favorite color or favorite hobby is fishing. So for this one, this will also be independent because one event does not influence the other event. All right, and that's it for, multi well, for the independent rule. Any question in regard to independent versus dependent? Sweet. All right, so up next we're gonna get into something called the multiplication rule. So the multiplication rule, the only time you use the multiplication rule is if you're doing multiple selection. So instead of me saying I'm randomly selecting one person or two person, uh, well, sorry, instead of me saying I'm randomly selecting one person, we're randomly selecting n many people. So I could say we're randomly selecting two people or I'm randomly se selecting three people. So if the multiplication rule we use them when we're doing multiple selection, but also if we know the events are independent of each other. So let's go ahead and do this next problem. And I think that should be it for today's class. So this one says, according to Sports Illustrated, 78% of NFL players who are retired for only two years file for bankruptcy, and after five years of retirement, 60% of N NBA players suffer from the same fate. My notes have something completely different. Here, I think I added Mine does too. Is it this one? Um, um, it says, it's... if the probability that person A will be alive in 20 years is 0.7, and the probability that person B will be alive in 20 years is 0.5. Okay, here we'll do that one. Yeah, because I think I changed it. Cool. Will you put a notification when you make changes like this since everything is online now? Yeah, I'll put a notification, but this should be like the only one time I do this. All right. What's the probability that person A survive? Think 0. 0.70. 0. 0.7. Cool. 0. 0.7. And then we have person B. 0. 
25. Cool. All right, thank you. All right, so first thing we want to do, so the probability that person A survive is 0.70 or 70%, and the pr probability person B survive is 0.50 or 50%. So first thing we want to do is person A independent from person B. So the fact that person A um, survive, does that make it more likely that person B will survive? Or are they pretty much independent from each other? So on the chat you put, are they independent or are they not independent? Cool. Yeah, so they should be independent from each other. So they're independent from each other because if one person survived, that doesn't make it more likely that the other person is going to survive because they're living independent life from each other. So if you look at this question, they wanted to know the probability that both of them will survive, will survive or be alive. So we want person A to be alive. I'll put A. But we also want person B to be alive too. So if you notice for this one, we're doing two selections. So we're doing the selection that person A will be alive, but also um, we're also doing that person B should also be alive. So we know the probability that person A will be alive is 0.70. And another probability person B will be alive is 0.50. So for this one, since both events are mo are independent from each other and sorry, they're independent from each other, what we could do, we could just actually multiply the two probability and that will give us our answer. So if I do 0 0.70 times 0 0.5, let me see. 70 times 0.5. Cool. All right, so we get 0.35, or you could just say 35%. Cool. And that's how you want to use the multiplication rule. So whenever you're doing multiple selection, but also if they're independent from each other, you just want to multiply the two probability. And usually you want to convert the probability to decimal for that way the answer will make sense. But that's it for that first example. Any question for that example? Cool. Mm -hmm. 